Welcome to episode 92 of this series where I'm programming an NES game. Uh, although I've transitioned off of doing it live from Twitch for all of the streams, as I announced in the uh, prior episode. So this is the first of the episodes where I am uh, programming, just recording what I'm doing and not live. And we'll see how that goes, if it's any faster or more um, productive, it's certainly more flexible, and I'll continue to do the um, the Thursday stream like I talked about at nine Eastern, uh, but for a shorter period and sort of more focused on the interactions versus the um, versus the uh, just me sitting and programming. So let's get started. <clears throat> the last time we left off, we had fixed the attribute code. Um, so that it was properly drawing the background. The problem was that, uh, as you saw there, the ship was immediately being destroyed, and my guess is that it was as a result of the, uh, sorry, the uh, metatile collision detection being totally wrong now. So let's start by taking a look at that. So, well, this is the old format, so why, why is that the old format? What do we have in here? Alright, so, <clears throat> oh, okay, right. I'm in the wrong directory. Oops. Okay. Um, okay. All right, so if we look at the grid here, these two tiles are collidable. These are not, otherwise they would uh, have that mask on them, though doesn't seem to be affecting the bottom ones for some reason. So let's start though by looking at the collision information in the uh, files. Make sure that that's written out properly. So the collision data is fixed, and it had been, um, I believe, let's see, originally we were using two bytes, yeah, so originally we were using two bytes for 16 bits, each bit represented which of the tiles within the meta tile was collidable, and now that we only have four tiles in the meta tile, we only need four bits. So we had changed the representation of the meta tile collision data. Um, I don't remember where exactly that's located here in the file, so we're gonna wait for Visual Studio to possibly open very slowly. Any day now, there we go and um, look at the collision information and see if, uh, if what's in there makes sense. All right, so the collision is one, one byte and it's got the least significant bits. So that would be palette size is 16. The image is 256. So we got four bytes for the version. We've got 16 for the palettes. We've got 256 for the data. Uh, 
which I'm just looking at uh, what it's showing in the bottom when I select. Uh, here where it says the number of bytes. Okay, so 256 bytes, and then one is if there is collision, and then uh, this is the collision byte, and it is 1011. So that looks like then when I modified it I, I may have set the collision bit just just a moment ago yeah so now the two lower bits so it's going in the order of well we can kind of just sort of reverse engineer it right and even though we wrote it so uh, if I set just the first tile, the one tile over there, that's setting it to 1, oh, so let's see, so those are going to be the top two bits and the, uh, sorry, the top two tiles and those are the lower two tiles, so let's take a look at what the assembly code is doing when it's checking the math collision. Um, actually, the other thing, I don't remember how it's storing that in the exported map. Um, let's see. It's writing the four tiles. We're writing the collision somewhere else. I don't remember. Uh, meta tile collision not bin. So this is just writing the one byte into. MT collisions. Okay. So what this is doing here then is we are okay. Here we are. So check player collision with the map. So we're taking the X position, and we're taking the player, let's see, add the X, why are we doing this? Store Y, this is our counter for the collision loop. Load Y zero, this is used for shifting into the appropriate position in the collision buffer. Check player collision with map. So we get the X position, and then we load Y with whatever we're doing to shift. We're incrementing Y, cl clearing the carry, and adding player collision, comma Y. What is player collision? Oh, okay. So that's the the play. Okay, right. So the player has a certain number of collision points that we defined. So if we load uh, 
those collision points, that's what we're using to check against the background, right? So we are then, after we add with carry, we are shifting right. One, two, three, we're dividing by 32. And I guess that's to find out which specific X tile we are in. Load a zero add param store a address parameter one. Store it in address parameter one plus one. I gotta remember how this all works. So um, this is our Y world position. We're load Y with temp three, which increment Y clear carry. Still not sure I remember what Y is doing in here. Should have documented this better. Um, this is doing one, two, three, four, five. Left shift, logical shift right and rotate. Logical shift right, rotate. Why am I... So I'm trying to think about why I would be rotating the bits around. So when I shift the right, the bits off to the right, it's going into the any bit that said goes into the carry, and then I'm rotating right, which will pull it off the carry and put it onto the end of the um, the uh, the value at address param one. Oh, because I'm doing. Right, okay, because this is Y world plus one, and then I'm doing a division. Okay. I'm doing a division, and it's 32. Oh, it's 32. Okay. All right. So this is actually a little bit simpler to understand now that I thought through this. So um, let's comment this so that I don't have to think through how this worked again. So uh, load the lower byte of the Y world position and uh, let's see load the upper byte of the Y world position and if the carry is clear, right, so when we had done our add, if the carry was set, we need to increment the value at Y world position plus one. Um, check the carry result of the add to a to see if we have to increment Y world position plus one, um, do a 16 bit divide by 32 by shifting and rotating. Now, the only thing is that we were dividing by 32 because that was the size of the meta tile. We now need to divide by. 16 um, because we have a two tiles by two tiles instead of um, four by four so we only need to divide by 16 uh, I believe to right to find out which meta tile that maps onto uh, so let's see that's one two three Three is eight, four, 16, and then that would be 32, which we don't need to do anymore. And then we store, uh, let's see, let's add 
uh, to find player position uh, over map. Multiply by 8 to find offset into map. Temp is X and address parameter 1 is Y. Okay, so let's see here for a second. So this was getting the X value increment Y clear carry and add the player add the X collision point. So why are we adding that X collision point? And then one, two, three. So this is also, this should be also divided. Um, I'm still... Oh, okay, right. Right, 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 right. Um, okay, so this actually makes sense. Uh, get the players... Get the um, player sprites position at top corner and add the collision point X offset. So um, the sprite uh, the sprite data in memory has the top left corner. The collision point is offset by an X and a Y, which is what we're doing here. So we're, we're actually getting the offset, which is for X just one byte, and then we have to divide by 16, um, divide by 16 to find metatile position we're over uh, for x. And then uh, we're going to do the same thing for the um, y position. The main thing, though, is that the offset for the uh, y position, it's two two bytes in player collision um, and then we're doing the same thing here and then we will end up with multiply by 8 to find so this shouldn't be multiplied by 16 uh, 16 now because we're dealing with um, the smaller meta tiles that are 16 by 16 instead of 32 by 32. So instead of multiplying by 8, which is the width of the 32 by 32 meta tiles, we're multiplying by the uh, the width of the number of 16 by 16 meta tiles, which happens to be 16. So we've got to, um, let's see, load A, shift left, rotate left, shift left, rotate left, shift left, rotate left. We got to do it one more time. Clear carry, add carry temp. Right, so uh, after the multiply, um, uh, I believe that's the X offset. Right, I said somewhere Oh, right, so uh, after offsetting by span for y, add the value of x, which we are doing there. Um, and this is, after, if we uh, have the carry set, then we have to increment address parameter 1. Um, load a level mem, clear carry, add carry param 1. Same thing, we're just grabbing. At this point, we are grabbing the meta tile. Yeah, so we're grabbing the normalized meta tile value of the. Grab the meta tile at this location. This is normalized, so we have to look up below, right? which is what we're doing. So we're, we're grabbing the level, uh, we're loading that and we're adding, oh, that's the address we're, we're dealing with, right? So we're, um, get the address for Metatile at this location. Um, yep. And 
then get the normalized metatile value, look up the metatile uh, in absolute, and then from there we load the collision byte from MT collision. And now this part has to change. So the first part is we compare it to zero and if it's equal then, let's see, clear carrot, uh, MD collision plus one. We don't need to do that anymore because it's just one byte for the MT collision. Now it's not two like it was before. We were doing the OR before because we wanted to take all the bytes and all the bits and smash them together into one byte. And if any of them were set, then we would actually check the collision. Um, otherwise, we would continue on to the next collision point, uh, which, let's see, check collision loop. That's got to be down further uh, yeah that's further down after 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 all that other stuff we're basically um, uh, no collision on this meta tile uh, check if we're done all right so take the player y world value and now divide by eight to find the position in the eight by eight grid mod four so that we can find a value zero to three. So instead of mod four, now we want to mod um, two. So we can find a value of zero through one, which is the row, the meta tile that we are potentially colliding with. So instead of doing this, we're doing this. Um, the rest, let's see. Y world and divide by eight to find the position in the eight by eight grid. Eight by eight grid. Right, this is so this is wrong. This is gonna be sixteen by um if I'm doing this right. It's basically sixteen by sixteen. So we're gonna divide by sixteen because of the change of the meta tile size. So same thing here, we're going to do another divide, um, divide by 16 to find offset into the tile um, grid, load y position, y position, all this stuff, let's see. So we found, so we're at the point where we found that yes, the player is colliding potentially yeah so we found that the player is the the collision point is over a meta tile that has collision so now let's now we're finding okay what is the exact why are we doing that if we found the meta tile I guess because what we're doing, hmm, it's a good question. It's almost like we're doing the division multiple times. Do we destroy temp somewhere and address param one? Yeah, so out of RAM 1 gets destroyed over here. Temp is probably still good. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to change this right now. Again, we may be able to um, fix this. Uh, or I shouldn't say fix it. Uh, make it more uh, efficient. But right now it was working fine. So I'm not sure that we need to do anything so this is okay so then let's see so then it's multiplying by four um, 
multiplying by 4 based on that it's going to offset it because of the metatile size, so or metatile span. So, um, oh, okay, because this is actually, we have the metatile. Now we need to figure out which of the individual tiles that it is it's in within the metatile itself. Uh, multiply by 2 for offset into the metatile itself. And then, uh, let's see, then we've got this. We're doing the same thing where we are anding it by one, we don't have to do anything. This is just gonna increment, uh, it's just gonna increment the um, value that we calculated into outer param one, which is, gets added here. So that's our offset into the metatile, compare eight. Why am I comparing eight? Subtract eight. Um, compare, branch carry clear, set carry, subtract eight. Oh, okay, so this is, this technically can't happen. anymore so basically what this is doing this is so what we were doing before was we were saying okay we have these um, this 16 tile meta tile right four by four um, and we have two bytes that hold the collision data for the meta tile now we have to figure out if we've transitioned from the one byte to the next. And in order to do that, we were looking at, is the value that we calculated bigger than eight? And if it's bigger than eight, we're gonna subtract eight and then um, work uh, by uh, modifying where we're looking to get the, um, to get the collision byte. Um, because we uh, need the second byte and not the first one, but now that won't technically happen um, anymore because we're using the 16 by 16. So, uh, do I want to delete it or comment it out? I kind of want to just. <sighs> comment it out. You do multi line. I forget how you do it. I know how to do it in what's it called? Sublime text. Uh, I thought it was just Control Shift L. Visual Studio Code. Multi line edits. Control Alt, and then you do your line selection, and then you can do your uh, work that way. Um, all right, so we load Y with temp, and then we are just shifting however many, shifting however many we need to based on the value that we calculated, and. Um, decrementing Y, and then we check to see if that bit is set to one and if it's not. All right, let's see. I think that should be it. All right, so far so good. The ship hasn't just randomly exploded. You can still fire things, so. That, all right, so the player collision still worked. I don't know why we're seeing random, oh, that's fun. 
random cloud spawning, but okay. Some sort of new buffer overrun. Excellent. I can no longer control a ship. Enemies are no longer spawning. Um, where's my other script? Oops. I forgot that it doesn't work that way. Yeah, so there's obviously something wrong with uh, it's updating the entities incorrectly. I'm curious to see if the player... Yeah, so something else is going on. Um... Hmm. Love to know why the. All right, so that's all. When does that go wrong? Pretty quickly. Why is that buffer being messed up? Um, hmm. Trying to think what would be what would be breaking that in what we're doing here. I mean, one thing we can do to um, to see if that has any impact or not is. Um, get rid of that code there that's um, that's actually trying to mess with the player to make it explode when the game is running Interesting. So why is this... Why does it have a black background but the entities does not draw string? I don't know. That's interesting. All right, well, <clears throat> let's, let's do something else here before we even do any other anything. Let's see if getting rid of the calls to the collision code uh, caused this problem to go away. So if I just make this jump to entity complete instead of checking collision. Do we oop, do we see similar problem or is it still happening? Or is it still going to run normally? Basically I'm trying to see if something we changed is triggering that behavior and it looks like it is because you can see the entities are not getting mangled here in this array. Everything else is now working including the ship getting destroyed by uh, 
by the enemy fire. So, all right, what did we break in the collision code? Let's do this. So if I just do something simple like does that break it? I'm just wondering if I'm messing with uh, variables that I somehow I'm depending on the values of even though I shouldn't be. Doesn't seem to be the case, it doesn't seem to care about that. Everything else seems to be working just fine. All right, so that's not the problem, that's good. this behavior it's kind of strange So this is, we're just checking So we're just checking every collision point, right? We got to make sure that those are all checked. If uh, compare it, if it's equal, or entity complete. Otherwise, we go back to collision loop up here. Uh, store Y into temp three. That's shifting appropriate. Position. Does that make sense? Why? I don't know. Load the X position, load Y with the offset. Um, oh, you know what? 
That might not be right. So let's see. Let me think about this. So the number of well, that should be okay. That was I was questioning whether or not we're looking up into the player collision appropriately, but that should be all right because yeah, I think that's that's fine. So we have the exposition we're getting for the player, we're getting the we're adding the player collision X and then we are trying to find out which meta tile we're over. So we're dividing that by 16 and then storing that in temp. And then we are doing the same thing for Y, but it's multi-byte, so we're grabbing the lower byte of the Y player collision, storing at a param one, then loading a with the Y position one. And if the carry was clear after the add, then we don't need to increment what's in A, so that's fine. And then one, two, three, four, we're shifting 16. So, is that right? Or should that be a rotate and a shift? Go take a look at that for a second. Um, actually, we'll also look at the instruction because I don't remember the behavior. So, um, get out of here. Uh, logical shift, right? Logical shift, right? Zero shifted into bit seven and the bits zero is shifted into carry. Yeah, okay, so that A holds Y position plus one, so we're shifting right and then we're rotating param one, which takes carry and puts into bit seven and then shift and rotate shift and rotate shift and rotate okay um, and then we're storing that in temp plus one and then we're loading y what does temp word have in it nothing okay so we're loading y with that and putting it into temp word So then we've got the address parameter and we're loading that into A. And then multiplying that by 16, which is the number of meta tiles in the meta tile row. So one, two, three, four. Oh, that is, wait. Shift, rotate, shift, rotate, shift, rotate. Yeah, so that's one too many times. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. No, wait, is it? No, that's, okay, that's right. I don't know why. I don't know why 
I'm having problem visualizing it to be correct without separating it like that, but okay. Sometimes you got to do that so that when you look at it, it makes sense. Or I do, anyway. I don't know. Um, Alright, so we're clearing the carry, and then we're adding the X position. Branch carry clear. Okay. This is all good. Lo get the address for the location, clear carry, and add address param 1, which gives a gives us the base address that we're looking at. If the carry is clear, we don't need to increment address param one by anything. We're storing that and then we're loading address level mem plus one. We're clearing the carry and we're adding address param plus one and storing that in address param plus one. So now address param one and one plus one have the meta tile we're interested in. So we can just get it based on y being zero transfer A to Y, and then we're going to do the lookup. Now, why are we shifting left? By two. Okay, so this is wrong. So we were shifting by one. We were doing a single left shift to multiply by two because each collision had two bytes. Now we, it's just one byte, so that's all we need. Transfer A to Y, load the collision, compare it to zero. Okay, so that was definitely wrong there. That sh that's fixed, but I don't know why that would have caused the weirdness we were seeing. I don't expect that we will stop seeing that weirdness, but yeah, okay, so we're still seeing it. Um, let's uh, let's do this. So Endies is over here somewhere. I want to see what causes that to be overwritten? What code is actually doing that? One hundred. All right. So the first entity is the ship. Restart. I believe the player entity type is something like. Is that it? It's three. Uh, let's see. Where is my file that defines them? Player is three. Okay. So I want to see what code. Edit breakpoint. I want to see if when this is written, because nothing should be writing this, um, short of if I crash with something, which shouldn't be happening yet. So if we see problem, okay. Oh, it's pushing on the stack. It's a stack overflow. Interesting. Now there is part of the code that was doing a push that I comment out. I did. I commented out the corresponding pull. I don't even know if I need that, but okay. So that was triggering a stack overflow. That makes sense. 
if you push onto the stack eventually and without taking anything off eventually you're gonna run out of stack space um, all right so let's There's our player. Let's bring our script back, shall we? Where's our memory? And we could see the memory getting overwritten. It was like cascading down. But we should see the enemy ships populate in a moment. <laughs> I died. All right. Well, that's good because at least it proves that the um, all of that is looking good now. So let's um, let's see if we can't make it a little bit further here, so that I can actually test the collision. I should have put something collidable earlier on in the map. Ah. Um, doing that at high speed doesn't seem to help. Let's, uh, let's do that. Let's just add a collidable meta tile, uh, early on. So, scroll down. Let's, uh, add the bumper right there. Right there, we'll add a few of them. Let's export. Okay, and then is this still set up to do the export? Yeah, I'll just do it this way because I know it works and we had some problems that we never debugged we'll get to that soon enough um, okay so that's that and let's see if that reloaded the map properly now oh you know what I copy the files. I did. A, I did run make. Right. I should see the collidable meta tile show up here somewhere. There they are. Let's see if that actually works, or if it's even close. Nope. All right. Well, let's go back to this code here now and figure out why. My guess is it has something to do with the logic related to the bit shifting. So let's put a breakpoint because we do a check here where we say okay if if the the value is 0 then don't even bother checking against the actual collisions so what we want to do is we want to see okay if we if if we got to a point where we think it's possible something might have collided uh, this is in player asm then we should we should check it out. Um, there, put a breakpoint there. Restart. So let's see if we tr even trigger the breakpoint over that meta tile once it comes into sight. We should. All right, so that's not even, 
That's no good. All right, so why is that? When I load that position, what am I... getting. So y is 0, mt collision Let's take a look at um, the collision file. So For tile one, which is, I believe, what we're looking at there, then we can we can validate that by st stepping, scooting back a moment uh, in the code. And um, so, let's see. So y is zero. An address param should give us, huh? Really? Seems to not be any different. Okay. So that's the problem, is that we're not calculating something correctly here. So we'll, we'll back all the way. And check this out and see what's going on. Actually, we want to do it there. Okay. So the first collision point we're getting, we're getting player's x position is 74, the x offset 0. Right, okay, we're increment y, clear carry, and then we're going to get player co collision y. So 74, um, 7C, that sounds right. That's, I think that's eight. Yep, okay, so that, that looks good. And then we're gonna divide that by 16 to find out which meta tile across the screen we're on. So we're gonna just shift that to three, four. So that's seven, which is roughly in the middle. So that sounds reasonable so that gets into temp and we're going to load zero and put and initialize address param one and one plus one for the whole word and then we're going to load the lower byte of the y world position and then we're going to grab the collision lower byte which uh, that's not the right thing. So, uh, that's okay. But I believe that it's at zero because it's right at the top of the sprite. If we look at the... Assets PNG player dot meta tile. Nope, dot sprite. doesn't like that. Is that only going to work with a full path? Okay, so it's at Y0, so that makes sense. Okay, so store that there and get Y world position plus one. Carry is clear, so we're not going to try to add one there. 
So then we're going to divide that by 16 by using the shift and roll. Um, let's do something here for a second. So this is B29 is the value. Um, we go B29, and we want to divide that by 16. So the value we should get in the end is 178. So That is B2, and that's what we have in adder param 1. Uh, temp, store a temp word plus 1. Load y adder param and store y. So temp word is B2. What are we using? I wonder if that's the problem um, because we're storing the temp word and then we're doing this math on adder param, but then are we using adder param later on and not temp word? I'm not sure why I did that. So, all right, so this we're doing the reverse operation now. We want to find out the actual specific row, not the uh, sort of loosely or uh, we went from a specific pixel value down to um, the row count, and now we're going back up into pixels, but, um, or sorry, now we're multiplying by the span of the uh, screen metatile grid. Uh, so, so now if we have this, we want to times it by 16, we should get 2848, which is B. Two zero. So add our param. Uh, hmm. B2 for adder param, adder param plus one. That seems wrong. So what does that actually equal? I don't want to clear this calculator because I want to save that value. So hex BB2 is 2994. Hmm. And then add X, which is temp, which is seven. That part looks right. So we end up with B27. Oh, which that's, oh, okay. Cause we hadn't stored the value of adder param. We were still working on it. Okay, that's, that's fine then, that's good. All right, so then we're getting the base address of the level memory, clearing the carry. We're adding adder param one. So let's see, so we're getting the bottom byte 
clearing the carry, adding the bottom byte of adder param 1. The carry is clear, so we don't need to increment adder param 1 plus 1. We're storing that. So that's our base address for the level mem. Then we're loading level mem plus 1, clearing the carry, adding the carry, adding with carry, and storing. And so we're saying that it's at FF8F which is dangerously close to the end of the address range, but let's ignore that for now. We knew that this was pretty large compared to the previous map, but it's not large enough that it's overrunning the, um, the bank, which is fine. So let's leave it alone for now. Um, all right, so we have adder param plus one and add a param, which gives us our meta tile that we should be looking up. So we're gonna load by with zero because we just wanna get the value at add a param one and it's giving us zero. So let's take a look at FF8F, which sounds wrong anyway, but maybe it's just off by a little bit. All right, so it's all zeros. So it's way too far down. Why? Let's take a look. So level mem is F468. F468. So that's the beginning of the map. And that's the end of the map here. So we're not even close. It's something something in the way that this is being calculated is obviously wrong um, how do we do step back shift F10 Let's see if we can spot the the issue this is awesome that I can go backwards So let's let's think about this for a second. So we're taking the x position, and I want to find out what the offset is into the meta tile. So th this being divided makes sense, and then we're taking the y position, which is the world position. Which what's the value of that? do that oh I didn't want to do that all right well so let's see so it's 29 for the bottom byte then B, so it's B29 for the Y world position. So then I wanna say, okay, how far, how many rows am I at? So I'm at 16 rows, oops. That's not what I wanted to do, because that's in decimal, but I divided by 16. So I've got this, I'm going to divide by 16, I get 178 rows. So then after I have 178 rows, if I want to offset into the array, that's times 16. And that gives me 2848, which is what it calculated. And then it was plus seven to give me the 20, B27. So the only thing I can think of is that there's something wrong with the way it's looking into this. B, although, hmm. 
Hmm. Is it that it's not supposed to be divided by 16 evenly? Is that the problem? Because 240 divided by 1615. When I was using 32, it was 7. So 8 by 7. Fifteen total rows of sixteen. Does that matter? It doesn't really matter. B twenty seven. And then what is level mem? Where's the level? It's at F four six eight. F468 is F468 plus B27 is F8F, but that that's too large. Right, B27. FF8F is not level data. Um, F468 is. So let me think about what am I doing wrong when I do. Oh, wait a minute. No, that's right. There are 16 columns of... So, if we're at... Wait a minute. How many rows are in this map even? Or if that's the problem. So this map only has a hundred rows. But we're calculating that it's at a, a it's at row 178. So that is the problem. The player. Oh, okay, wait a minute. I think I know what happened. I think what happened. I think what happened is that when I initialized the world position, I did it based on the original map size. And so because it doesn't really know any better, it's in a position that's out of bounds. So uh, 80C decimal divided by 16 is that is too many so it's okay so the that's that's the problem or at least one of the problems if the player is starting at a why a world position if the let me Back up for a second. The if there are only a hundred rows, that means there are sixteen hundred pixels. And then 
I want to subtract 120, which means that it sh the player should be at like 5C8. Um, and then where this is for the cloud where is the camera initialization because that may also be wrong No, okay, so the, the good news is the camera position is based on, camera position is actually based on the, the size of the map. So the player position was wrong, and because it's only sort of loosely based on a real calculation of the player's position on the map versus the camera position versus the actual world. Okay, so that is interesting. That caused a collision, but it was early. I assume that the map is just why <sighs> why is this colliding how is this colliding with anything right now So it looks like it's either the back collision points that are colliding, or it's just totally wrong. I guess the sort of interesting question is if that's where the ship is colliding, let me see something here. That's that's okay. So, hmm. Is my oh, it's in the player. So this was where we were checking to see if it even was worth checking to see if anything collided, right? So it's weird that it's triggering there. Um, let's 
go back and look at what we're looking at here. So based on, I want to see what the Y position of the player at least claims to be. 55, C7, C7, 55. What? C seven fifty five. It's not even a Well, that's part of the problem, but how did that happen? Let's take a look at um, of the entities specifically the Y world position which is let's see one two bytes three and four one two three and four so it is definitely the C755 which is bizarre but um, let's go ahead and read that. So uh, base address, well, so the base address is 100. It's uh, 102. MU mem type CPU uh, 2. Oh no, it's just read word like that. So let's uh, rerun that and see what we get. So that's totally wrong. Um, strange. Is it ever right? I wish there was a way. keep the script running no matter if you reset or not. No. Uh, did I just make a stupid mistake when I was... setting it up here? 5C8. Oh yeah, C8. Five, right? Five C eight uh, divided by yeah. Okay, helps if you don't reverse the bytes, I suppose. Although I don't know that that will have resulted in the problem we were seeing. That looks more like it should. That's good. Now we're not just reading random bytes in memory. All right, so that collided. The question is that just now a problem of the bytes being... So the left collision didn't work. That right one seemed to... back up a second here and try and make this a little bit more of a precise test here. 
That one worked okay. I mean, it's not in the place that I want it to be, but it's at least partially right. Right now, I think the problem is the bit order that it is testing is wrong. So it's missing. I mean, it's almost guaranteed that that's what the problem is. So that's why it's sort of only partially colliding. Um, all right, so stop, pause, 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 pause. Uh, okay, that's good. So let's go back and look at, so the collision for that is set up so that the, oh, really? Well, I don't want that. I want it to be, uh, bumper dot meta tile. Toggle for it. Oh. I guess I never went back to what I wanted it to be originally, so let's copy that back over. Shooter assets, EG export. So we've got that back and let's reload the file. All right, so now it's the lower two bits. Um, and I'm sure I'm just shifting this out um, incorrectly. So let's look at the logic there and try to figure out what was going on. So temp Holds are offset into the meta tile. So that's just going to be 0, 1, 2, or 3. And all right, so basically what's happening is the bits are reversed from what they need to be. And I would say that that's because of the asset tool being wrong, not because of the code in the game being wrong. It should be, the value should be, th uh, let's see, shifted by two, so that's uh, one, two, four, 12, so that should be C0. That's what that byte should be. Uh, or sorry, zero C, because for the first, oh no, wait a minute. Maybe it was right, let me think about that. So for the first meta tile, or for the first tile in the meta tile, which is offset zero, We're just gonna look at the first pair y to zero branch if equal, otherwise shift right. So if it's zero, we're just gonna grab bit one. But right, okay, but that's not correct because or let me think about this. Let me visualize this because I'm confusing myself, as is usually what happens with this kind of nonsense. So, um, if this is our meta tile, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, and I want the bits to correspond. So, zero, collision for zero should be. at the lowest bit, lowest bit. 
Um, so it just checks and. And then collision for one. It will shift one and then it will check that. And then V2, it will shift twice and check in three. So that's actually correct. Was it just that the meta tile was wrong? It's possible. I mean, the meta tile was missing some data or missing one collision. Um, one, one of the tiles was not set for collision, so it's entirely possible that that's all it was. So let's take a look. So good news is we're not triggering any weird collisions that we're not expecting. Okay, and that collided correctly now. Stop. That's that was too. That was not. That was too early. Or was that just a weirdness because of? Maybe that was a weirdness because of the rewind. Because that looks good now for all of those. That didn't. Uh, well, is it because it's, let's get clear of it and then reposition. Yeah, that doesn't seem correct. So why why oh is it just off is it like offset wrong that could be it that's doing nothing that caused a crash that causes a crash when the nose hits I wish the controls were a little bit more precise says the programmer who made them That, that's interesting. I'm not sure why it's triggering on that. It shouldn't be. I also want to see something here. So that's what the value actually had in it. Um, we could take the player's Y world position and instead of displaying that raw like we're doing, we could figure out what the map position would be for it and then show it that way. So let's do that. Um, I think one is the X. Yep, exposition is at oh Ooh. hmm oh I 
I see. So this is... Well, it gets recalculated, I think, which is why it does that little jump initially. I don't, I don't know that that's a problem. Um, all right, so... The first one is the X, and this is... So this is read byte, I believe. Uh, mu.mem type.cpu false comma and I want to get the x value according to what it would say in tiled also and attempt to call nil read byte it's not read byte or is it just read So that gives me, um, I do math, I do four of this. No. just math four. Maybe. Ah, okay. I don't know why it didn't. Uh, maybe because it's not inbuilt stuff. That's cool. All right, so we're flooring it so that it is uh, not a decimal value. Floating point, rather. So let's go back to the map here and look at where the collision would be. So this is 682. Okay, so I mean, it's colliding. Colliding at the right Y value, so that's good. It's just not correctly. Now that that part's weird. Um, six, seven, eight. So that totally avoided it, even though one of those collision points should have triggered it. And then that one worked. Am I only checking the one collision point? That would be weird. Five eighty two. So that one corner collision point seems to be working there correctly. So that's also strange because, well, see now why did that collide? So it's somehow miscalculating. I, 
guess the question is, am I getting the same result as this? I should be. Oh, wait a minute. X position divided by 16 mod 2. But that's not... Let's divide by 8. Now it's divided by 16. Of course, that probably just completely broke it. And there was a reason it was 8, but we'll see. of the script or something. Okay, well that is promising, except that I was deleting some of my Lua code somehow. Um, Instead was deleting some of the Lua code. All right. Um, all right. So that was that all it was. That collided. That seemed like that was a little too early. I mean, that is definitely more consistent, but it seems like now it's not allowing the player to pass over at all. Let's see here. The exposition divided by 60 mod 2 to find out what final, position, final bit position we want to look at. Load A, get the X position. And load Y, temp 3. So get the player collision. Right, so we're adding the X collision back in, and then we're divided by 16. So that's correct now. And then we're ending by 1 because it needs to be either a value of 0 or 1. And then why do we not do this for, oh, we do this for Y position as well, the Y world position. So we take the Y world position and if the carry is clear, we add Why? Okay, because we take the world position, we get the... Okay, so... Taking the lower byte of that and taking... Oh, are we not adding... We're not adding the second part of that? That's strange. Because we should also be doing this, right? We should also be adding Y world position plus one. Um, sorry, to um, this, to, to the collision value um, that's in the second byte. There's the world position load Y with temp Three. What does temp three have in it? I have no idea. Temp three. Oh, is the counter right? Um, and then we're going to increment the first byte. 
past the first byte, which is the X position, and then we're in... Why are we doing this twice? I think I messed this part up. Let's see. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Player collision. Oh no, because the first byte is okay. Never mind. The first byte is the um, the count. So that's okay. Or it's off by the count, which so we have to compensate. So this is that. And then that's weird that I'm not including the next byte after that. I guess because the offset, oh, maybe there is no additional offset byte. Yeah, okay, never mind. It's just a one byte offset because, yeah, never mind. Okay, sorry. So, I'm just getting tired here. Uh, world position, adding temp three, getting temp three, incrementing past the first byte. Um, and then we get our collision offset for Y. And we're storing it in address parameter. And then if there was a, then we load this. If there was a carry, then clear the carry and add one. So A has the upper byte. And then we're dividing that whole thing by 16. One, two, three, four. And then we're loading the lower byte and wrapping it and storing it. And then get the offset. So we're shifting it. So it may, it might be zero or it might be two. And then we're going to figure out if the X essentially adds one to it. <coughs> So we're taking the x position, the loading y, temp3, we're getting the x value from player collision by adding it to the x position, and then we're dividing it by 16 and modding it, and then it may add 1 to adder param, and then we're storing that into temp, and then we're pulling that thing off the stack, and then we're loading y with temp and then the value is going to either be 0, 1, 2, or 3. If the value is 0 then we don't need to shift. We just do an AND if it's 0 then we are done. If it's not 0... Oh, wait a minute. So that is, I think that got broken also by, let's go back. I think that got broken by my change. Let's take a look. Because it looks like we're not actually looping and checking the other bytes anymore. What? Oh, not shooter, player. We want to go down to where we are. What is it? What's the label? Collide bit shift. Collide bit shift. All right. So pair Y zero branch equal left shift. 
decrement jump. Pair Y is zero. Okay, no, that's fine then. Because if it's zero already, then we don't need to... All right, yeah, sorry. Okay, so that's good. This is where we're turning it into... Um, Other stuff should happen there, but okay, so if it's that, it's that. So if it's one, we're gonna compare it to zero, it's not equal, so we're gonna shift right, we're gonna decrement, we're gonna jump, and then it'll be zero, and then we'll come in and we'll look at the bit value. So in the case of, in the case of, this it's tile one and then the offset let's see so and the offset here should be three so it shouldn't be saying that it's colliding it should be saying that it's not colliding Let's take a look at the value in the debugger as we calculate the shifts. Wrong file. All right, so coming into here right away. So, temp says zero, but that's not, mm, that's not right. It's 5A. So we're adding in the collision, that gives us 62, we divide by 16, and we get six. Right, and that, does that sound right? That's six. Yeah, that's six. And then we're ending by one because we want to, yeah, okay, so that's fine because it's the left column, so we should get zero when we do. Oh, is that what A has in it? MT collision. What is it? Wait a minute. What did I push it up into the stack? Check collision loop. Transfer Y to A. Oh, okay. I don't even need to do this, I don't think, anymore, because we don't have to check a secondary byte, but the thing is that's weird is we have, we get this Y world position, and we calculate it, and then we end it, and then we store it in adder param 1, And then we do ASL, and then, oh, we are adding it to this. So we're, what was it? It was zero, and it's zero here. Why was it zero there? All right, so when we grab the value, it's two F in the lower byte. Um, and what is it in the upper byte? It's five, it's five two F, okay? So five, five two F is 13, 27, divided by 16, gives us 82. 
Um, and then we're doing and one, and that gives us zero. And I guess that's technically true for the position it's at right now. So then the question is, is it just offset into the map incorrectly? That could very well be it. Um, So it's saying it's 82, but the player Y world position that's being calculated by the Lua is saying it's 83. So which is it? Is it the, is the problem the shift logic is bad? gives you 52, right? Because it shifts the F off, which is 82. Why does... It's like the position on the screen Maybe that's possible. It's maybe maybe the calculation. Um, maybe the calculation for where the player sprite is versus where it should be is wrong. Um, because there's a calculation it does where it offsets the player position by the camera position. Load the Y position of the ND, and then we load the Y position plus one and set the carry and subtract the camera Y position plus one and start it in temp two. And then we load the lower byte and subtract that and store that there. Why are we not storing that in? Why is that load A, Y world position plus one? Set the carry, subtract camera Y position plus one. Store A temp two. Why is that being stored in temp two? And then load Y position X, set the carry, subtract the camera Y position and store that in Y position. I mean, that should be... I mean, it should be the other way around, really. Right, it should be We want to subtract this, set the carry, subtract this, store there, branch of carry clear to this next label here. Otherwise, we want to um, uh, decrement in these in the y world position plus one x. Right? We want to. Uh, decrement that by one because we've carried. And then we want to load that value, set the carry, subtract the count. Yeah, 
and then store that back into why aren't we storing it back into here? That doesn't make any sense. Now this is probably going to break and and then I'm going to be like, oh, right, there was some obscure reason that I didn't document way back when. So, f no. So, what the hell is that all about? So that's decrementing the Y, the camera position, the player camera position far too quickly. Oh, wait a minute. Um, store it in. Oh, <sighs> right. Um, let's go back for a second. So the player player Okay. So it's storing it into I don't know why it's storing the difference of I guess because it's always going to be zero for the, I don't know that it even needs to, I don't know what the benefit of doing this is. So the player's position, the Y position is always greater than the camera. And it should always be such that the lower byte is the only one that matters. So that's why we're not actually restoring that value into um, Y world position. And the other thing is that the entity Y position is different. That's what we were storing into. Um, I'm thinking we still still want to change this to, let's see. Storing that into Y position, and that's fine. If there's a carry, we don't want to store, we want to change. No, we don't want to change the Y position of, in the world. I guess technically that shouldn't happen. Yeah, all right, never mind. Thought maybe that was it, but I forgot why it was doing this. Um, all right, so uh, let me put a comment here. This calculates the screen position of the player based on the Y world position and the camera position and stores that screen position into Y pos. All right, so the strange thing is that I thought for sure That it was going to be something like that, but it seems like it's it seems like it's just a weird miscalculation. Like it's I don't understand. It's
It's like as soon as it's hitting 82. That's when it's colliding. Even though it shouldn't be quite then because even though 82 is the right Y tile for it, like so 82 is correct in terms of this, generally the, the actual Y value should be something different and that is what is troubling me here. add another value to the output for a moment and see if we can make some sense of this. Uh, what's the problem? Okay, so So we've got this, the, the Y value on the right is the, um, is the actual Y world position. And what's happening is as soon as we're hitting 1327, then we're, we're colliding. So 1327 gives us 82. You know what it is? It should be dividing by 32. Or no. Um, yeah, I guess 32 would work. The problem is that it's not granular enough. It should be dividing one more. It should be um, dividing by 32 and then taking the... So this was a case where 32 is actually correct. So let's see here. I guess the same would be true with the X position because we're doing 16, but what we want, want to know is which of the individual tiles it's over. So let's see here. This is just me forgetting how all of this works and poorly documenting it because I was just struggling to get it to work in the first place. Um, all right, so take... And now divide by 32 to find the position on the uh, full screen. And the same thing is going to be true. With um, the X. because we want that to be down to the tile scale, not to the meta tile scale. And that's why we're getting a value that is illogical. Or it's not that it's illogical, but we're getting a value that causes it to collide too early. <clears throat> it's because we're not, it's uh, dividing by 16 doesn't give us the granularity we need. So where is my Where'd my Lewis script go before we collide? Now we're not colliding at all. It was 32. <sighs>
feel like that was it. I just... something... Oh, wait. No. Dumb. Divide by eight. Divide by eight, stupid. Divide by the number of actual pixels in the tiles, not by some dumb arbitrary value that you didn't actually mean. So, same thing that I said before, except to not divide by 32, divide by eight. Because that will tell you which tile you are relative to the screen um, and then we can use that to map into what part of the meta tile we're on right please work okay so that was that was close although it seemed a little bit too far in but that was closer to what I was expecting. And I seem to be getting a consistent result in terms of the um, all the collision points. So he says, except he didn't. I don't understand what I'm... Did I just make that change too hastily and I missed something? go back to the original code for a moment. I think it was dividing by 8 and I misunderstood what the intent was because divided by 8 was the same as dividing by the number of meta tiles but that's not what I wanted it to do. Yeah, so that um, multiply by 2 for the offset into the meta tile itself this is multiplying by four. So this is, yeah, that would be okay. ASL add a param one. And then this is doing the divide by eight and then an and. And then it's just adding it. And the rest should be okay. Was messing for a second here. Make sure that we're actually running the latest stuff and nothing can get sort of strangely loaded. working it's just not it's weird it's like it's still offsetting it for some reason I'd like for this to work so I can go to bed um, all right so 1332 is the Y world position that gives us 166 um, and then that mod um, that and by one gives us zero so why don't we just do that so we can see what the value is so we're 
I'm dividing by eight and flooring it and then um, uh, and one. Parentheses. Okay. So it's alternating in the way that I expect it to. Because if we look at the grid, it's going one, zero in the appropriate spots. So let's, um, let's take a look at the X calculation there as well. That's just this and by one. So reset the game. Let's just look at the scripting output. So I'm alternating between zero and one on those values like I expect that we would. So corner is not the point we're checking, but the top is. So the the Y is okay. Whoa, why did that collide now? That is not okay. You can't do that. That was correct because of the right corner piece there, but that was also correct. <sighs> okay. So now if we put the nose in, that was correct. That was correct. Put it all the way over. Now it's not correct. Why is it not correct? Is the meta tile data? That I have in the ROM wrong? Where is MT collision in memory? Is it using some stale version of the, uh, of uh, the, collision data, it's possible. And he... Zero. Uh, okay, so, but that's for the first one. FB42, so let's go to that location. FB42. Zero, three, zero, zero. That's what's in Fred. So that's okay. I'm determined to get this fixed here. Uh, let's take a look at this. Right, 
So we're at a point where it knows that the metatile is collidable. I guess I should put this Put that there. Let me back up for a second and go to where I wanted it to be. So we have the Y world position. We add the collision point, which is zero, and then we load that and we do all the carry stuff. And um, what did I say? So it was 2F. 5-2-F um, which is, yep, so divide by 8 gives us A5 so that's A5, that gives us 1 store that, okay and then multiply it so that we have the offset into the meta tile. So that's two. That, that's correct. Load Y. So A had in it the collision No, what has in it the yeah um, except that's that's not right that's not right at all um, <clears throat> empty collision okay so that's that's the other problem. So we're going in there and pulling stuff off A, or pulling off stuff off the stack, but that's not correct. It should be just saying, well, wait a minute, what did temp have in it? Temp has our offset. Okay, so that's, Um, hmm. Should just be MT collision Y. And then we actually don't. Oh yeah, okay. And then that's why we need Y, because that tells us, yeah, transfer A to Y, okay. That, I think that's the missing piece now, finally. I mean, there were obviously other problems, but the, the issue was that we needed Y to know what the value was that we were gonna be checking against for the collision and shifting, and we weren't doing that. Let's see if we finally got it here. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's see what we got. As long as we don't get any weird random sort of collisions at first, we'll be, I'll be happy with that. All right, so we're at the point where we think it could be colliding, but we've got to do the math to see if that's the case. So we got to a point where we're doing all these calculations and we store the value, and then we're pulling A, transferring to Y, we're loading, yes, that's our collision bits, and then we're loading Y with temp, and then we're shifting and we're shifting. 
and it shouldn't collide because, well, it shouldn't, and the values in the um, in the ROM say it shouldn't, and then we do. Okay. I think, and that's why it was sort of appearing like random was because it was using values that were in A after it had determined correctly that it should collide. That looks better there. That's good because it was just next to it. It wasn't even... Yes, that looks excellent. That looks like it's doing exactly what it should now. Thank goodness. All right. So there we are. We got the collision working properly now with our 16 by 16 and we are finally back to where we were before we started this. So now I can tell Jordan that he can start uh, working on the um, 16 by 16 uh, meta tiles and that they will work and I can start working on some game design things um, and so as always thank you for watching um, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Clairvis I'm on Nintendo Ages Zelius um, comment on the uh, video on YouTube uh, lots of people have been watching and um, especially the zero pages and providing feedback and uh, asking for content. Episode four will be a starter uh, sort of episode of, you know, how to get your first program up and running and bootstrapped. Um, I will start putting together episode little sort of mini segments of the zero pages for episode three um, related to the instructions so that we can cover all the different instructions that are part of 6502 assembly. Um, and, uh, and that's it. Uh, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.